next day, Blando gave me a more expensive room on the third floor, between the apartments of an aged moneylender and the room of a respectable upholsterer. There was no one on the fourth floor. It was not long before I found that Tsar's eagerness for my company was not as great as it had seemed while he was persuading me to move down from the fifth story. He did not ask me to call on him, and when I did call, he appeared uneasy and played listlessly. This was always at night. In the day he slept and would admit no one. My liking for him did not grow, though the attic room and the weird music seemed to hold an odd fascination for me. I had a curious desire to look out of that window, over the wall and down the unseen slope, at the glittering roofs and spires which must lie outspread there. Once, I went up the garret during theatre hours, when Zahn was away, but the door was locked.
It would be useless to describe the plague of Eric's arm on that dreadful night. It was more horrible than anything, anything I have ever overheard, because I could now see the expression of his face, and could realize that this time, the motive was stark fear. He was trying to make a noise to ward something off, or drown something out. What? I could not imagine. Awesome, though I felt it must be. The playing grew fantastic, delirious, and hysterical. The player was dripping with an uncanny perspiration and twisted like a monkey, always looking frantically at the curtain window. In his frenzied strains, I could almost see shadowy satyrs and bacchanals dancing and weaving insanely through seething abysses of cloud and smoke and lightning. The shutter began to rattle in a howling night wind, which had sprung up outside as if in answer to the mad play within. Start screaming viol, now I did it, sir, emitting sounds I have never thought a viol would emit. The shutter rattled more loudly, unfastened, and commenced slamming against the window. Then the glass broke shiveringly under the persistent impacts, and the chill wind rushed in, making the candles sputter, and rustling the sheets of paper on the table, and Sam had begun to write out his horrible secret. I looked at Zahn and saw that he was past conscious observation. His blue eyes were bulging, glassy and sightless, and the frantic flame had become a blind, mechanical, unrecognizable orgy. A sudden gust, stronger than the others, caught up the manuscript and bore it toward the window. I followed the flying sheets in desperation, but they were gone before I reached the demolished flames. And when I reached the window, it was very dark, but the city's lights always burned, and I expected to see them there amidst the rain and wind. Yet, when I looked from that highest of all gable windows, looked while the candles sputtered and the insane fire howled with the night wind, I saw no city spread below, and no friendly lights gleamed from remembered streets. Only the blackness. Of space illimitable, unimagined space, alive with motion and music, and having no semblance of anything. And as I stood there looking in terror, the wind blew out both the candles in that ancient deep garret, leaving the insanity and impenetrable darkness in chaos and pandemonium before me, and the demon madness of that nightmare by all behind me. I staggered back in the dark, without the means of striking a light, crashing against the table, overturning a chair, and finally groping my way to the place where the blackness screamed with shocking music. To save myself and Eric's arm, I could at least try whatever the power was supposed to be. Once, I thought some chill thing rushed me, and I screamed, but my scream could not be heard above the head. Smile. Suddenly, out of the blackness, the man who saw him most struck me, and I knew that I was close to the player. I felt a head, touched the back of Zahn's chair, and then found and shook his shoulder in an effort to bring him to his senses. He did not respond, and still the vial shrieked on without slacking. I moved my hand to his head, whose mechanical nodding I was able to stop, and shouted in his ear that we must both flee from the unknown things of the night. But he neither answered me nor abated the frenzy of his unutterable music, while all through the gamut strange currents of wind seemed to dance in the darkness of Babel. When my hand touched his ear, I shuddered, though I knew not why, knew not why, till I felt in the still place. The ice cold, stiff and blood breathing face was glassy eye bulged uselessly into the void, and then, by some miracle, finding the door on the larger of the vault, I plunged wildly away from that glassy eye thing in the dark, and from the ghoulish howling of that accursed pile, whose fury increased even as I plunged, leaping, floating, flying down those endless stairs, through the dark house, racing mindlessly out into the narrow, steep and ancient street of steps, and tottering houses, clattering down steps and over cobbles to the lower streets, and the putrid gadget wall river, panting across the dark bridge.
Despite my most careful searches and investigations, I have never since been able to find a rude assay. But I am not wholly sorry, either for this or for the loss in undreamable abysses of the closely written sheets which alone could have explained the music of Eric Zahn.